Welcome back to another incredible episode of the number one real estate podcast in the world. My name is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, but better known as MG the Mortgage Guy. And my name is Kiana Watson, broker extraordinaire, license number 317576. Welcome to the Rants and Gems show. As promised, I told you guys when my book released. <laughs> Yo, you didn't even <laughs> wait. <laughs> As promised, I want y'all to know that my book is on my forehead, it's on my shoulder, I'm putting it on the side, I'm putting it over here, it's going to be over here, it's going to sit right there, it's going to be like Ray J hat, like this whole episode, right? Yo, can you finish saying your license number before you throw the book out? The book is out. <laughs> Matt, been, Matt been taking over with House Hack Economics since August. It's my turn now. It's yeah. my turn. It is my turn. But yes, it's here. It's here. It's here. Here. Yeah, like, I, I'm not even mad at that. Yo, tell them how to get the book real quick. Go to cleartoclose.com. Okay, you guys, go to cleartoclosethebook.com and get your book. You can go to my social media page, click the link in my bio. You can get the book. The book is being on, on Barnes and Nobles and it is on Amazon. You can get the book from there. I appreciate your support. It is a business memoir. It's for people that want to know where Kiana came from, how I became who I am today. And it's going to give you some business and life advice. So go to my website, get the book. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you. Look, there you have it. House Hackonomics. Go pick up House Hackonomics. <laughs> Y'all see that? Y'all see <laughs> Go pick up the books, y'all, and stop playing. But most importantly, go to all podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts at, Spotify, Apple, all that good stuff. Make sure you download Rants and Gems, uh, rate it five stars. Most importantly, leave a review, right, because those reviews are important. And, you know, share it with 10 people and start checking in with Rants and Gems audio. We're going to start dropping daily content on there to continue to help you guys further your mission in real estate. So not only are we going to get the visuals every Wednesday here on Earn Your Leisure's YouTube channel, but we're going to start getting that daily content so that way you guys can make great real estate decisions. So make sure you guys are tapped in with the audio. Tap in, tap in. Today is going to be a good day. Let's talk about this market. You know, I know a lot of you guys, I want, I want to see some activity in the chat. Give us some activity in the chat while we're getting things set up. This real estate market has shifted abruptly. Do you want to know these numbers? Drop drop an emoji in the chat if you're ready. Yo, drop some gems in the comment. We about to get started with this. But first, before we get started with this um, housing market update, we got to give a big shout out to our brand partner, Zillow. Shout out to all the good folks at Zillow, Tyrone, all of you wonderful people. We love you guys. Um, but we want to know if you guys ever catch yourself browsing Zillow at 3 a.m. I do it all the time. It's too easy. Know what also is easy? Find a new home on Zillow. With Zillow, you can take a closer look at homes on the market with thousands of listings that have virtual tours and interactive floor plans. Compare your favorite home side by side to see which one has features you want. Request a tour with a local agent to get on the ground insights about neighborhoods you like or learn about financing options and connect with a lender to apply for a pre-qualification. So when you find the right one, you'll be ready. All right? So... Find your next place on Zillow.com and use those calculators, right? The calculators on Zillow is really good. I yeah. personally use them all the time. It's quick. It's easy. You can run quick numbers on them, and they have a lot of data on Zillow. So make sure you guys go to Zillow.com and do your research, do your due diligence, and go find your next home on Zillow. All right? So, again, shout out to Zillow for sponsoring today's episode. All right. So let's talk about the market. The market has been going crazy. Let's yeah. first talk about um, the inventory, right? So let me share my screen. As you guys know, we like to give you guys some visuals when we're doing this here at Rants and Gems. Right. All right. So let me see. Uh, let me share this real quick. Let me go right here. And this is right up your alley. Kiana. Oh, I stopped sharing. This is why I hate Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Talk with this damn Max. Where's my windows? You got to have the Mac. You got to have the Mac. You got to yep. upgrade your life. You gotta yeah, I know I got a love-hate relationship with this Mac thing. All right. So let me go back to here. Let me bring this on the screen real quick. Let me add this to the screen. Oh, where did Kiana just go to? 
<laughs> I guess she hate Mac too. She got off the screen real quick. All right. All right. I need to make this bigger. Pause. So I, that way I can read this. All right, Kian. Let me add her to the stream. I guess you hate Mac too. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> All right, so this is right up your alley, right? We're talking about the um, damn, why this thing is not big enough for me over here? All right, can you see it good on your end, Kiana? Yes, I can. All right, so let's set this off. We have the um, inventory is now at three percent above levels a year ago, but remains 38 percent of 2019, rain 38 percent below. That of 2019. Damn, that's crazy. Inventory is now up 3% over a year ago, but still before the pandemic, it's still 38% below those levels. What are you seeing in the market right now, Kiana, in Atlanta? Is inventory well, going up? We have slightly more inventory, but we still at the same time do not have a lot of inventory. So what I'm seeing is more of the more a little more inventory, not quite a lot. And buyers are being so specific in particular about the type of homes that they want, given that the interest rates are where they are. But do we have a slight height in inventory? Yes. The sellers are now offering more concessions or just offering concessions as a standard, which is really interesting because last, not even forget last year, in January, we could not get sellers concessions. So here we are a couple of months later, and now we're able to get concessions from the seller. The sellers are negotiating the pricing. So it's really now a good time for a buyer to negotiate. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, there's a lot of different programs that's coming back to the market um, now that rates are higher and inventory is um, increasing. But I want to I want to be clear about this. Right. When you guys and I need you guys to really everybody in the audience to understand this, when you start seeing, well, there's more inventory in the market, please understand that's because it's taking a little bit longer for homes to sell. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that there's an uptick and new listings that are happening, right? It's just now these homes, because of rising interest rates, because of the first time home buyer, let's call it spade to spade, they're getting squeezed out, right? Oh, absolutely. If you're they're getting squeezed out. So they can't buy nothing right now. There's nothing There's nothing affordable to purchase. So what I'm noticing, when I like ran the numbers with my brokerage, um, we did our sales meeting yesterday. And what I saw when I was running the numbers is the commissions that are being paid by the sellers are actually a little lower so now in the buyers themselves, they're being pickier when it comes to their homes and negotiating money off the price. So where we had an average of people cl closing at 100% or 99% of value, that has kind of dropped down to 97, 98%, which is a really big deal. That means you're able to get about 3% off of the actual asking price. So in my opinion, it is a good time, but that doesn't mean it's a lot of, more, it's not a lot more inventory. What that means for a buyer is it's still limited inventory. You have less competition. It was not the inventory that was the issue. It was the competition. So for every house, you would have 10 offers and you would have 10 people were, that were interested. So you have lower, lower people of interest. It's like supply and demand. You know, so the demand is a little bit lower, but our supply hasn't shifted or changed to the point where it's going to make a big difference. No, a hundred thousand percent agree with that. Um, so again, guys, don't don't get it twisted. When you see these numbers of, of inventory rising, it doesn't mean that there are a lot of listings coming to the market. No, there's no foreclosures coming to the market right now. Delinquency is still one percent of the market. So you guys always hear me talk about supply and demand. Right now, with rising rates and inflation, the Fed is trying to balance the supply and this demand. So that's what you're seeing right now when you see this quote unquote headlines that says total inventory is now up 3% over a year ago. It's just homes are taking longer and now they moved over to the next month <laughs> and they count that as still available inventory. So that's that's one thing that's in the news that I thought was very important that, that we share. Absolutely. Let's, Let's go to this next slide, right? Because <clears throat> this is very important. Sales slowed significantly in September, right? So let me bring this slide up right here. 
Um, so that way everybody can kind of see what we're talking about because we want to make sure that everybody is getting the information. And guys, if you want to go ahead and screenshot, oh, I, I shared the same damn slide. <laughs> <laughs> get together, MJ. While he's getting it together, do not forget. <laughs> do not forget. Do remember in my clue voice. That clear to close. Brokering My Blueprint for Success is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Go Do ahead. remember, quick commercial break. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Sales have slowed significantly in September. You want to read this one? Absolutely. So sales have slowed, slowed significantly in September. And what we're seeing is the number of newly pending listings fell 18% month over month and are down 29.3% compared to last year. In part, that is because of a sharp deceleration in activity at the end of the month, all right? So when rates were at their highest in September, of course, sales were down because most people had sticker shock when rates went from 3%, 4%, and spiked in the upwards of 6%, right? So what are we going to see? Sales are down more than 6% from September of 2019, Mortgage rates, the target driver of monthly payments, rose through September, and they are so volatile right now that it is really hurting the buyer's ability to plan for the future. And I can add some context to that. I was really like I was looking at the rates and I'm meeting with my lenders and I'm, you know, going over numbers. I'm like, let's compare this like apples to oranges. How is this really affecting a buyer? And basically they said that on a five hundred thousand dollar home. With a 10% down rate, the rates before would have been right around, let's say, $2,200 a month. And now with the new rates, it's increased $1,000 a month. So that's a huge, significant change for the same house, right? No wonder buyers are slowing down. They, you can't afford what you want. And what you actually were qualified for at one point and you could purchase, you were being outbid to purchase it. Now you're no longer in a bidding war and now you're fighting interest rates. So, of course, rates, everything went down in September because everybody had sticker shock on these new rates. And I feel like it's just something we have to get used to. Look, 7%, I said probably four months ago, rates will be at 7% coming towards the end of the year. And people were looking at me like I was crazy. At this time, I think rates were still, they were going up and they were in the low fours. And I told, I think this was like right before April. This had to be March. I said this. I said, yeah. once the Fed stopped buying bonds and these things start happening, I said, watch, when that quantitative easing is gone, rates are going to skyrocket. I said, by the end of the year, we're going to be at 7%. And ladies and gentlemen, today we are at 7%. So it's only natural for first-time homebuyers because first-time homebuyers, you got to look at, make up 33% of the market. Yeah. So if they're now getting pushed out, they was already getting pushed out with high prices. And even right. with rates being in, in the two to 3% range, they still can't really buy nothing, right? They were getting outbid by people with cash or larger down payments. Now that segment of buyers is really truly hurting because most of those buyers are buying with minimum down payments yeah. and the payment shock of them going from renters to owners is just unbearable. So it's not affordable no more. This is, I think is a good thing. We need this. But again, ladies and gentlemen, just because it's slowing up, it doesn't mean it's crashing. And that's the, that's the thing. It doesn't mean it's crashing because what's going on in the market, the market has told us it's just correcting itself. We're in the middle of a correction across the country, but people are purchasing and selling property every single day. Right. It's it's still properties are still being sold every single day. You know, there are new programs that are coming out. We got rate buy downs that are being rolled out. Three, two, ones, two, ones, however they want to name it. So if you are a buyer and you're listening to this podcast right now, I would highly encourage you to make sure you speak to your lender about rate buy downs and make sure you understand how that works and really understand how you can get into a home. Because our favorite quote right now, which is really cheesy, but it's basically you marry the house, but you date the rate and really understand that you're not locked into the rate. It's a cheesy, cheesy quote. It's so cheesy. It's the cheesiest quote ever, but it is what it is, right? <laughs> Look. Marry the house and date the rate, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and understand that you're not locked into the rate forever. You can always refinance. And they're projected to bring the rates down. Didn't they say the end of next year? So they'll start coming back down. So I tell you, I'm gonna tell you exactly when the rates are gonna go go down. They're gonna go down when the Republicans come in office. It's very simple. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I'm gonna say it for you. When the when the Republicans come back in office, and look, I before y'all try to get at MG, I am a registered independent. So don't come at me with your bullshit, okay? I don't want to hear it today. All right. When they come back in office, and this is just a cycle, ladies and gentlemen, they are going to cut everything because they are going to want to be Captain Save America, and they're going to want to kickstart the economy, get it out the recession. So what are they going to do? Slash the Fed's rates. Rates are going to start dropping again, and everybody who's purchasing right now is going to have the opportunity to refinance. So like Kiana said, date... You said date the rate, marry, marry the, the house. house. Date the rate. <laughs> but also, what you got to ask yourself is, if you're buying a primary residence, are you looking to sell in a year or two? If not, then what are we talking about? You're looking to live there with your family, live there for seven years, 10 years. What are we talking about? It's a cycle. Hold the house, live it, enjoy the memories. And when you have the opportunity to refinance, make sure your financials are still intact. And then just go ahead and refinance the house and call it a day. Yeah, that's it. And save some money. Now, let's talk about one of our favorite topics is, is rental income, right? Ladies and gentlemen, landlords will win in any market. We've yeah. said this all the time. And now rental affordability, and this is why real estate is probably one of the best tools that you have to um, combat inflation. Because in inflationary times that we have been living in since the pandemic a.k.a. the pandemic started two years ago is we see house prices rising where owners of real estate are winning and you see rental prices are rising all at the same time. Yeah. Who's winning? Rental um, landlords, homeowners, people who have rental properties. So guys, although rent growth is moderating, rapid increases throughout the pandemic have drastically reduced rental affordability. Zillow, and shout out to Zillow for all his data today. Zillow's rent index pegs typical U.S. rent at $2,084 a month. That's crazy. With 10% annual growth in September, down from the record-breaking peak of 17.2% in February. So the month-over-month -month growth has declined to a more normal rate of 0.3% from its peak of 22 that we've seen in July 2021. Now, here we have Miami is up 51%. Damn. <laughs> Since September of 2019, Miami's up 51%, 49% in Tampa, and 43% in Phoenix, Arizona. Landlords are winning, ladies and gentlemen. This is why you need to get some rental properties. They are. And what I'm noticing, and most people talk about the rates, but we're, we're forgetting that there's a lot of cash buyers or people that are able to purchase these investment properties cash. These rates, they don't have a rate. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so let's think about it. And I have a couple of investors. They don't have to deal with the interest rate. And now they're able to have some negotiating power when it comes to buying these properties because these sellers are ready to sell. So now they're getting the best deals. So if I were you, if you're, you know, if you're looking to purchase a home and you're looking to get that second property as an investment property, before you just jump out and get the property and become a landlord, look at the trends in your area when it comes to what the rental income would be and make sure you understand your monthly uh, mortgage payment to the T as much as you possibly can. Because what you don't want to do is buy a house and your monthly payment is $2,800 a month and you can only charge $3,000 a month in rent. Your cash flow is $200. I mean, I don't know about you, but that just doesn't make sense to me. And a lot, and so you need to make sure you understand your cash flow and do your calculations. But it's a great time to invest because people are going to be renting and we're going to turn into a world where more people will be renters than there are homeowners and they're getting squoze out because of the way the economy is going. Absolutely. I 1000% I agree with that. Again, affordability on both ends of the spectrum, whether you want to own, a primary residence, or you want to rent. Absolutely. It's both through the roof, right? So you just got to pick your poison because there's really only three or four things you can do when it comes to housing. You can own, you can rent, you can go live with your mom and your daddy, <laughs> or you can go be homeless. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure you don't want to go be homeless. 
Yeah. So you're going to have to, and you don't want to live with mommy and daddy. So you're going to either own some shit or you're going to rent something. So the owners are always going to win. The people who own the most will win the game at the end of the day and create generational wealth for their children's children. So we encourage our audience, don't be scared by the high interest rates. Don't be scared by a quote unquote recession. Just make sure you guys are buying smart. You know your numbers. You pay attention to Kiana's page, my page. You listen to Rants and Gems. You take our classes. You read the books because you're going to get all the information that you need to know about real estate and real estate investing and those things. I so agree. that was a whole mouthful pause. We, yeah, said a, yeah. we said a lot in a short period of time. Um, <laughs> I know they're ready for Egypt. I see the comments. Where is they ready for? If y'all ready for Egypt, Egypt where is Egypt? If y'all ready for Egypt, throw some gems in, 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 in the comments right now because Egypt is a certified gem dropper. Let's yeah. bring let's 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 bring Egypt on right now. Yes, let's, it's time for Egypt. Let me see some gems in the chat. Y'all ready for Egypt to come on? She is a legend. Every time I've seen Egypt in Atlanta, she's just been so pleasant every single time. Like she's consistent. And y'all see she's killing it. Like she's killing the real estate game. She's on TV. She's representing us in excellence. She's showing black families, black wealth, black love. <laughs> black everything. Black everything. Black excellence, black real estate, flipping houses. Women empowerment, just everything that I absolutely love. So, Egypt, without further ado, welcome to the Rants and Gym Show. Hello, family. How are you? Hey, um, what's up, Egypt? I'm officially hired to be like my the person that introduces me for the rest of my life. FYI. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, can I, before y'all ask me any questions, can I just drop something else? Because I was listening to all to all the rants and gems that you just gave them about just like how the market's going and what's happening with interest rates and all of that. Right now, the, where interest rates currently are, when I first purchased, and I'm going to date myself here, when I purchased my first property, interest rates were 6.875. And that was considered, my whole family was like excited because that was considered the best rate they ever heard. My parents mm. they purchased their first house. It was a, over a 14% interest rate. And that was a great rate considering that my grandparents purchased their $17,000 row home in North Philadelphia for 22%. That wow. was the interest rate then. And that was in a super uh, hyper inflationary period. That was the last super hyper inflationary period that, that we experienced. So even though we're a lot of us in this generation, we're used to hearing twos and threes. I'm he still here to tell you the best time to buy property is still now, like right now. It's always going to be now in the moment. And for those sitting on the sidelines saying, I'm just going to wait for interest rates to drop, you go right ahead and wait for those interest rates to drop if they do, because I'm going to throw a wild card out there. Okay? Go ahead. I love it. What if, if you look around the world and every good real estate investor doesn't just look right here with tunnel vision, you got to look at the trends and what's happening around the world. If we're about to enter, like many economists say, another super hyperinflationary period, then right now where interest rates are could potentially be the lowest that we see in the next two generations. Mm. So how does that change the game for you? Because if they go up much further, a lot of people are just completely asked out, right? Yes. I, I don't want to look at these numbers next year and see that there is a 30 percent wealth gap and 30 percent gap between our counter, our white counterparts versus our, our, our black communities as far as home ownership. I don't want to look around and see that there's 70 percent still African-Americans who don't have wills and trusts and who have not been able to do estate planning and haven't been able to build wealth. It is always going to be now get off the sideline, buy your real estate. Like Matt said, worst case scenario, if rates do or best case. Let me say that best case scenario. If rates drop, you can always refi. Absolutely. You can always refi. All right, absolutely. done. Sorry. Go ahead. No, absolutely. No, I agree with everything you said. <laughs> that was just my wild card. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a major rant. And I love mm -hmm. that rant because I think it's very important for people to stop looking at what the interest rate is and start focusing on what are your goals, what are Great your goals. needs, right? Mm -hmm. If you, if you, look at your numbers and you say, you know what, it's more advantageous for me and my family to have bigger space to do this. And can we afford that mortgage payment? Right. Who cares what the rate is? Can, it's, the, it's the mortgage payment. 
And that's why I say, even as an investor, I'm like, if the numbers don't work, neither do I. But if the numbers work now, it doesn't matter what those interest rates are doing. And you're right, with rents continuing to climb, because people still have to keep up with inflation, your money is always going to be good in real estate. Any multimillionaire that I know, at least 30% of their portfolio is in real estate. That's for a reason. It is still and always going to be one of the best wealth building tools. And we say this all the time and we just appreciate you coming on our channel and saying that um, to our uh, Rants and Gems community, because I think people get so caught up in the rate. And like Matt just said, I could, let's, let's worry about the monthly payment. If my monthly payment is going to be this dollar amount, don't focus on the rate. Buy within the, the number that you can afford. Then you're not, you're, you're not stressed about the rates. I think what happens with the rates is that a lot of us are trying to get these mansions, these mini mansions, especially in Atlanta, you know, you could go to certain places and spend about 900000 to get you a whole mini mansion. And we're trying to basically increase our lifestyles. And it, there's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of people were able to take advantage of that when the rates were low. Now we all have to kind of get back to reality, humble yourselves and base it off of this is what I can afford. And this is the type of house that I'm going to start off in. Because it's not how you start, it's how you end. It's how you end. You know, when I first started purchasing property, um, I, I was still renting. I was renting where I lived in, in New Jersey. And I started by buying multifamilies. Mm -hmm. I was flipping those houses. Some of them I held on to because they were good cash flow properties, but I didn't necessarily, my first real estate pur purchase was not the one that I was living in. And so there are people right now who, and I, I hear this every day, they're afraid to buy because they don't know where their job's going to take them, or they don't just don't know where life's going to take them. But to me, if you buy multifamilies or if you just get in buying investment properties, that's stuff you're going to hold on and your, your kids can hold on to as long as there's cash cash flow for their entire life. You don't have to be worried so much about the house you're going to live in today. And I talk to a lot of investors and here's what I'm telling folks right now. Hold, hold. And yeah. I know I'm the flip queen. I had the flipping version <laughs> show, right? I'm supposed yeah. to be telling people to flip houses, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm always going to tell you the truth. Right now, the name of the game is hold. Kiana, you can be my witness to this because we're in the same market in Atlanta. For the past for the past decade, we've been watching a lot of these cash offers come in from corporations like BlackRock, Vanguard. And we and, and when you're on the list side, you're excited because you're like, yeah, I sold that one in 24 hours. I have five cash offers. I had, you know, but then you start to recognize what's really happening, the deeper ram ramifications, which is first time home buyers, families are being completely asked out. They're out of the game. They can't even get in the ring because they don't have the cash to compete. And so for the first time I was driving, um, and you may have seen this too, I was driving and I saw a single family com um, home community come up where everything was for rent. Did you mm -hmm. see it? I, I, see, I see two of them. Actually, one of them is in Pittsburgh where one of my listings is. They are building an entire, like, and first of all, they look fabulous. They're gorgeous. See, they're gorgeous. But see, but this is by design. This is what I want people to pay attention to. Stop me if I'm talking too much, y'all, because I can't. Keep going, keep going. So, so this is by design, okay? Buy up all the properties, buy up the opportunity for families to create wealth. Why? Because there are too many millionaires being made today. In 2021, two and a half new millionaires being made. In 2022, 1,900 millionaires being made per day. So what happens is the gap starts tightening up between the rich and the poor. And for the structure of this country to work, there has to be, there has to be the rich, there has to be the poor. And what they want to do is decimate the middle class. Yeah. And the way you decimate the middle class is by taking home ownership off the table, making it so it's not affordable, making it so inventory is not there. So now what happens is we get flooded with all the corporations that are buying up property and take making it so that first time home buyers can't get in. Where did you first start building your wealth? Tell the truth. Real estate. Real estate. Through and, and, and it was nothing like it, right? That equity, when you built that equity. So we have a real problem that we got to discuss, not just what, what the market's doing and how rates are fluctuating, guys. It's just 
get in, get off the fence and get in before really it's too late. Anytime you see single family communities coming up to this tune where they got 300 five bedroom single family homes, okay, gorgeous homes, is yeah. because people recognize that maybe we're moving to, we're moving to a space of where people are just not going to be able to own anymore, where they're going to become renters for life. That's an ugly truth. Sorry for that rant, but it's the truth. No, but that's God's honest truth. And this is what we were talking about a year ago on Rants and Gems and telling our community, look, look at what the institutional money is doing. They're not buying these properties to, to flip them no more. No. They're buying them to hold long term. And you see why right now. Look what rent is going to. Look what inflation is happening. They were they knew all of this was happening, going to happen two, three years ago. So they just got ahead of the curve and got ahead of everybody. And these rental communities, look at all the, um, um what's that? The, own, the rent to own programs that are now hitting the market. We I haven't seen those shits in years. But now like they're starting to come all back. Wait, yeah, Keanu, what you say? She might say what I'm about to say. What are you saying? Listen, they, they, they are structured and they are set up. But in my opinion, they are setting people up to fail. To fail. They you. know that you're not going to be able to purchase the property, but they put the dangle, the carrot, dangle the carrot in front of your face of you can eventually own this. Then you go for it. And then as real estate agents, we're, we're, we're just, we're, we're transactional. So we're just helping you buy, we're helping the corporation buy another home under their portfolio with a guaranteed renter. That is what these programs really are. When you think about it, we are just helping them buy a home with a guaranteed renter. And you are the guaranteed renter because now you're part of the home partners of America, the Lindsay's, the pathway homes, the Divi homes. They're all the same, to be honest, in my opinion, it's just a way for the institutional um, buyers to know, I can just buy this house with a guaranteed renter. You know, and I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I have a lot of people who ask me, hey, Egypt, what do you think about the rent to own? Is it a good idea? It is an unequivocal no, because less than 10% of people who go into rent to own programs actually are able to follow through with purchasing the property. And then, so that's just the reality of it. If you can't afford it today, don't buy it. <laughs> okay. Agreed. But do get off. Uh, one more thing I want to add. I know y'all y'all had other questions for me. One more thing I want to add. So as people are looking around the landscape and trying to figure out real estate wise, what to buy, where to buy, again, follow the economy and what the new trends are. When we were in the pandemic, people were moving south and they were they wanted to go on vacation. They wanted to get out of the house. So they were going to the coast. So it made sense if you were going to have an investment property or a secondary home or short term rental, et cetera, to have it you know, on the coast. Right now, do you know what the, the trending topic is? Yeah. People are people are talking about moving to the mountains. You just yeah. go on, you search the message boards and you tell me if I'm wrong. They're talking about moving to the mountains, buying secondary homes in the mountains because they want to be above sea level in case of a nuclear war. But I'm laughing, but this is real. So you got to pay attention to the tea leaves. They want to vacation there. They want to buy homes there, secondary properties, because they're watching what's happening around the world. That's a smart investor. And they see this coming. Like one, one thing about it, when you have to go where the investors go and they are going to the mountains, they're concerned. They're watching what's going on. They see what's going on in Russia. Like, oh, wait a minute. Are those nuclear bombs coming our way? Let me see what we can do to protect ourselves. But and, it, and it's sad to say, but we're still here trying to convince somebody that buying a home is a great idea. And that's hard for us. when we also know that there's a there's a, like you and I, like you were in the same market, right? There is a list of people that we don't have to convince that buying a home is a great idea. As a matter of fact, they're ready to buy all the homes. <laughs> and, but, <laughs> Every single last one of them. And, and, and check this out. A lot of them are, inter, at least on my list, they're international buyers. Yes, they, they see are. an opportunity here that a lot of people here are not recognizing and taking advantage of. Like I had a woman from Japan come and literally buy five homes. I was like, oh, it's going to be a good week. She, <laughs> she bought five homes all cash because they saw what was happening, specifically where Kiana and I are located. Yeah. Yeah. Georgia yeah. has an influx of investors out there buying up everything. I'm on somebody's text list. They're trying to buy my house. Hey, you know, this is a cash offer for you. Like, this is not real. This is where I live. It was so invasive. I'm like, how did I, how did I get on this list? <laughs> how did I get on this list? But this is what's happening here. And I think that it's great for us to educate people about 
we're forcing home ownership because we see the gap coming and they are eliminating that middle class and that how they do that is taking away the home ownership option for most people. So what do you think we should do? Like now it's like, we're talking real estate now from your perspective. Yeah, we are. I totally took y'all off subject. No, like no this is all on subject. This is what we like to talk. Right. Um, and so, so Kiana, you're asking me what I think we should do. Yeah, what, 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 what would be the solution I would never advise someone to do something that I'm, I myself am not doing. And so the solution is always to stay well diversified, to insulate yourself. And so I invest and I keep my, my funds, my money, my wealth the same way some multimillionaires that I had learned from early on advised me to, which is 30% in the actual market, 30% um, actually in real estate. And 30% liquidity, but liquidity, not in cash. Understand that. Just easy to move money. I don't keep my money in a bank, but that's another story. If y'all ask me later, I'll tell you. But but it's still liquid where I can reach it and I can use it for investment opportunity. And then 10% actually in precious metals. So gold, silver, palladium, actually tangible in small denominations. So again, that's 30, 30, 30, 10. And that's what I do. The smartest investors know that you, you know, you're, there's no way to avoid the ebbs and flows. Okay. We're going to experience highs. We're going to experience lows. That's in the stock market. That's in real estate. That's in life. That's yeah. in relationships. Yeah. There's going to be, there's going to be ebbs and flows, but what you can do again, by being well diversified is sort of hedge your bets. And when, when there's a loss and when the market dips, you use your liquidities to snatch up opportunities. And, and again, with interest rates being as high, high is what they are. If you do it that way, you'll be able to snatch opportunities in cash. Then you can refi them, right? Or take an equity line of credit out against them for a much lower interest rate. Better yet, if you want to go deeper, then you would have set up your estate. You would have set it up with a cash value life insurance plan. And then you would have used your cash value life insurance plan to take money out to buy you know, property and real estate. Therefore, you have a 0% interest rate on acquiring more property. But that's a longer conversation. Look, but that's a gem dropper. Drop some gems look, in the chat. Look, think, to oh, clip God, it up. Love your real estate. <laughs> clip it up, Tooks. <laughs> Man, that was a gem. Major gem. And I think that that's a great way to approach it. I'm glad that you shared that. You know, you I know you work with seasoned investors, first time buyers. You have your reality show and we are proud to see you on TV, you know, with your husband flipping property. So we just got to get to it because we see this whole I flip a house real quick. It happens. They choose three houses. You flip one. Boom. That's how quick it is. Tell us what really happened. Okay, so here's the truth, right? You're watching television. Hello, people. It's not entirely real life. It's literally 42 minutes of content, and then the rest are commercials. They cannot show you a two-month renovation in 42 minutes. And so, um, you know, people got frustrated. My network did get a little criticism some years ago about uh, just showing the beauty of flipping houses and renovating houses, but we are under a new regime it's discovery. They understand that people want the good, the bad, and the ugly. When they watched my last show, Flipping Virgins, um, and, and we were on for three seasons, I executive produced that show. When they watched Flipping Virgins, it was important to me to show the good, the bad, and the ugly. What can really happen you know, on a flip, the best that we could. On this show, Married to Real Estate with my husband, I'm also executive producing this show. And it was important for us to, to do a few things, to show the truth, the love, the compassion, the hard work, the heart of a Black family. Not what someone thought we should be or the narrative that someone thought should be conveyed, but the truth of a hardworking, loving, married Black family. Um, and, and that's what we're, we're able to show. And Married to Real Estate also shows the good, the bad, and the ugly renovation. Like, I think your husband's a builder, Kiana, right? Yes. So he's working on the development side and it's it, it gets ugly. Like today we had to redo an entire roof on both of our new construction bills mm -hmm. because of now the, rain, the way the rain was sloping down. So we had to now pull out the plans, have the architecture make like, 
a mess. Well, people, people need to know that. They need to know that because it's not for the faint of heart. Oh, right? it's not. And you and you get behind on budget, so you get behind yeah. on time. So when you're behind on time, you're behind on budget. And when you're behind on budget, you're behind on on your everything. You start losing your market share. You start losing yeah. the, the the profits. You're yeah. losing to your profits. So it's really you have to be passionate about it. And then go through the ebbs and flows. I don't care how planned you are. I don't care how organized you are. Things will happen flipping or building or just in real estate in general. I, so, I fully agree. And I think that it's our responsibility that as people are learning from us and all that they're learning from us to, to show them that. And so for me, for those who follow me on social media or who follow my shows, you know that I just try to be transparent. I laugh at my failures and I have failed. Y'all, I got fired from Chuck E. Cheese. So I have failed. <laughs> <laughs> I was the rat, by the way. I was in a rat costume. Oh my god! How did you get fired being a rat? I got because this little kid kicked the hell out of me in my knee, and all of a sudden I was like, "If you don't get off me," and they were like, "You scared the kid, Chucky?" <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so I got fired. I got fired from Chuck E. Cheese, and that's you know that's a funny story for me to look back on. I was using that to pay my way through school, and then I was a maid at the NYU guest suites, um, I, you know, and so this is my truth, right? Um, I was making the beds and I was tired because I was going to school. I had uh, morning classes and night classes, but then I was working as a maid. So I was so tired. So I was in this one room, like if I just take a 30 minute nap, will anybody know? I'm just gonna lay right here. I'm gonna take a 30 minute nap. And my boss came in and saw me sleeping in the hotel room. I was supposed to clean. I got fired as a maid. So I think I think the lesson I'm trying to go back to is what Kiana said. Where you start is not how you finish. Exactly. Right. And what I recognized is I'm not supposed to work for anybody. Mm. I'm not supposed to work for anybody. Now, with that said, someone with an entrepreneurial spirit and entrepreneurial mindset can still work a job. Because I've worked jobs. Matt, you you said you knew me from radio. Absolutely. But that's also how I started my real estate brand and real estate career. Because I walked into one of the radio stations that I, I worked at three stations in New York City. One of them I worked at. I was doing so well. Top ratings. but Killing it. I walked in. I don't want to say names. But I walked in and uh, there was new ownership. And they wanted to flip formats, you know, to an extent. And so in radio, when, when they do that, it often means you're out of a job and they don't have to honor your contract. So I found myself on the unemployment line in New York City. And this is a story many don't know. I haven't really talked about this much, but I was on the line, in, uh, unemployment line in New York City. And this is how the devil like tries to jab you when you're down. A cab rolled by and you know, those triangular ads on the top of the yeah. cab. Yeah. It was a billboard for my radio show. Oh. And I'm standing on the unemployment line. And I'm, I'm literally like, please don't stop there. Please don't stop there. And the cab stops right next to me. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and so I made myself a promise in that moment that I would never let someone control my destiny like that again. I would never allow myself in a position where I didn't have some level of of ownership and, and therefore I wouldn't be on the unemployment line ever again. So uh, after I collected my unemployment checks, recalibrated myself, got my real estate license, went in, became rookie of the year, really built a solid real estate career. I got another offer to be on the radio. And at first I turned it down and then I changed my mind. And when I changed my mind in that moment, it changed my life because I looked at it like, okay, I can accept four hours of free publicity and get paid for it, okay? Yes, I'll be on someone's payroll, but I am not their employee because I don't have an employee mindset. So I accepted the job with the condition that I would still obviously have my real estate career, that they would allow a certain amount of liners for my real estate business. And y'all know what I'm talking about, a certain amount oh. of liners for my real estate business and permit me to talk real estate in the middle of who Zoom and who and all that everybody else wanted to hear. And that is how I started to build my career. Every celebrity that came in the studio, I was given my card, taking advantage of the opportunity and telling stories about how my tenant on the third floor flushed, flushed her hair weave down and messed up the waistline. It cost me $17,000, you know, and I would tell these entertaining stories. Little did I know a casting director for HGTV would listen to my show 
-hmm. And they connected the dots. And that's how I got my first show, Property Virgins. And that lasted for eight years. Yep. Wow, did. that's incredible. Mm -hmm. I did, yo, that's an incredible story. So I want to ask you this. You being a licensed real estate broker, you have a big brand. Like in our audience, obviously, we're licensed professionals ourselves, right? And we have brands ourselves. So what tips would you give a real estate agent, a loan officer, anyone in financial services right now to how to grow their brand and market their business at the same time? What are three tips that you will give them? Well, the first thing, let me let me give credit where credit is due. You guys are phenomenal. Both of you as a as a, a combined couple, you know, the duo that you are on your show, but also individually, you've done a phenomenal job taking advantage of the biggest free tool that we have at our fingertips. And that's social media. I follow you both, which is how I wound up on your show. Um, and, and so you're doing a great job right now. Thank what you. I suggest to anybody watching and to yourselves is think of branding, not about where you are now and making people aware of where you are now. Brand for your future. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where are you in the next 10 years? And work backwards. So you start the branding now for where you see yourself. You always brand forward. So that's one. Number two is peel back the layers. This is a world and landscape where people, they trust who they know. And especially in real estate, which we're in, there's 2 million licensed professionals across the country as of this year. And only 13% of them are doing 97% of all the real estate business. And there's a reason why people, they just don't know how to lead generate, which I'm going to give you some tips on that in a, in a minute. But also number two, they're not, they're not resonating. They're not connecting. And real estate is a people business. With what you do, Matt, it's a people business because folks can go online and find all the information they need to know. They can find a realtor everywhere. They can find a lender everywhere. I mean, we're everywhere. But why use you? What is your unique value proposition? And how can you resonate with people specifically on the tools we're given social media? So for me, I recognize my value proposition. And it's not television. Actually, it's the complete opposite. <laughs> Mm. My value proposition, uh, number one is, yes, I, I'm a real estate and home space expert, but I'm also a mother. And so that is that's my truth. And I can speak to everything. I have three girls. OK, I can speak to everything from that perspective. I'm a married woman. I can speak from that perspective, but I'm also and I've claimed this for myself because I recognize this is what I've been called to do. I'm an inspirator. I inspire people. So when you peel back the layers of Egypt, it's real estate and home space and design. It's mom and relationship, but it's also inspiration. And anybody can, you know, do that, but you can never do it authentically like the person that owns it. And so what I would ask everybody is again, what is your unique value proposition? Claim it, be consistent, be persistent and own it. That was some major gems right there. May, especially the brand forward. The brand forward is, is like my number one tip. I remember <laughs> like I had a huge company. It was just me. <laughs> you, know, wait, wait. you notice, you notice Matt used that opportunity to pull his book up again, right? So you got to you know. You said brand forward, huh? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta dust myself off with that. That, that was gems. <laughs> look, oh man, it's so hot in here. <laughs> Y'all look funny. Hold on. I want to give you something else. So we talked about um, lead generation and that being the biggest reason why a lot of real estate agents fail. You know, in their first year, they just do not. They can't even get their family members to buy homes from them. They don't know where to get the leads. And in times like this, where um, uh, inventory is still low in some cities and some markets, we're looking in the wrong places. Like if, if you think just farming and sending out cards or sending news you can use letters is going to get you the real business, you're wrong. Again, you've got to plan forward. You lead generate forward. And so I have some tools that I use. I can't give you all my arsenal, but I can give you one that I use to be able to predict. This is for investors. This works for investors, but this also works for agents and it works for people who are in the market looking for a home right now and there's just nothing on the market so there's a program um here's what i want you to do get a pen real quick what this allows you to do is predict 
who is going to sell their home down to three months, down to six months, so that you can begin to reach out to those people directly. It also gives you the direct contact, <laughs> most recent contact for those people so you can contact them directly and ask them if they're interested in selling their home or make an offer directly on these off-market properties. So what I want you to do right now is text 833-676-4100. I want you to text GEMS. I put it on there for Ransom GEMS because oh, I believe okay. it. Okay. So if you text the word GEMS to 833-676-4135, you're going to get a link to the program that I use and it's free for you. Right Thank now, you. it's free for you. Okay. Thank you so much that. for sharing that. We have that. so many agents that listen and y'all mm -hmm. better, I hope you guys took note and you better text her and you better get this information because it is going to, we're getting into that market. It's already the point, where, what, what's the going term? 20% of the agents do 80% of the business. And it's, less than, it's less than that. Yeah, you said, what you said, 13%. 13%. 13%. As, as of 2022, there's 2 million agents, more than 2 million agents, 13% do 97% of all the sales. Wow. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. So. Listen, Incredible. we all need to survive this market as it goes through. And that's another question I know every agent has a question about. And you just gave them a major gem. As we go into what I say is a correcting market, if you, if you were a new agent, because I feel like when you're a seasoned agent, you already know what to do and how to diversify your clientele with listings and buyers and investors. And now you're flipping houses. You have other income sources. But if you're just a new agent, what would you recommend them they them do at this moment to kind of uh, keep going? Kiana, you notice I put on my glasses when I get serious, right? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm noticing that trend. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is tr truly what it is. Is I'm still in denial. I'm supposed to wear them all the time, but I take them off yeah. sometimes. <laughs> but um, so so if you're a new agent. Um, what I would say is, number one, welcome to the business. This is part of it. Ain't nothing changed but the year. There are ebbs and there are flows. And this is, instead of looking at this as a bad time to be in real estate, look at this as the perfect time for you to be getting in to learn real estate. Because when the market is moving so fast that, that people can't keep up, the experienced agents who have the fast track knowledge for you really don't have the time to help you and teach you and give you tips and allow you to shadow. But when it starts to slow down a little bit, you can take your courses, you get prepared, you get your marketing in order, you learn everything you need to be successful. So I believe in life and in real estate, there's a season for everything, right? So there's a season, there's a season to sow, there's a season to water and plant, and there's a season to reap. Right now is your opportunity to sow some seeds and look at it that way because it's cyclical and it's going to come back. It, it, trust me, it is. And you want to be ready, but you're not going to be ready if you're so worried about chasing the wrong business right now. Be prepared. And then I have a lot of agents, and I'm sure you do, um, Kiana, who want a mentor. Um, here's the biggest thing, not just in real estate, but just in business. A lot of the people that you're reaching out to and you want to be your mentor, they're doing they're so busy doing. Um, so, so you want to, if you want someone to be your mentor, you have to figure out what it is that you can bring to the table. Remember, relationships are reciprocal. And so instead of approaching everything like, what can I get from you? Give me, teach me, help me. It's what do you have to bring to the table that can add value mm -hmm. to that person so that they want to invest in you? Agreed? Agreed. And I say it all the time because it's a lifetime business. And this is one tip I want to put out there. People don't recognize it's a lifetime business. I have one of my agents. She's like my, you know, everybody knows Selena, right? Mm -hmm. Selena has been down with me for two years, opening any door I need her to open, doing whatever she needs to do to support me. So I if I give her one lead, I gave her one lead. She closed one deal. She closed it with Matt. Matt was the lender. Yeah. Do you know off that one closing, mm -hmm. that's why you got to think about it. That one closing, me telling her how to market that closing, she got three more leads. She got two more deals. So when, someone, when, you're, when you're looking at a mentor and they teach you everything they know, their back-end systems, their resources, how they talk to people, how they negotiate, this is a skill set. You got to come into this knowing that you're going to be in a supportive role for that person because when it's your time to shine and you have you have shown yourself worthy 
of being that person to that, that top performing agent, you all you need is one deal. One referral can just take you. And that's a lot. Like I gave you the referral today, but when they ready to sell three years from now or four years from now, they're not going to call me. They're going to call the person that I referred them to. And so you got to start thinking about it and stop coming from a situation of let me take and let me think about what can I give this person? What can I do? Can I get you some coffee? Can I help you open <laughs> can I help you the CMA? Can I help you do this? What can I do to help your day go easier? Can I help you with this schedule? Can I pick up the lock box for you? So when it's your time, you can understand it's, an, it's a give and take. Too many you people know, want to you guys, you, you may mention, uh, Matt, of how I sort of pivoted um, between real estate and radio and then television and all of that. And that just didn't happen overnight as really a toast to what Kiana is saying in a personal testimony, which is I had to learn. Right. I didn't just know how to be an executive producer and what that entailed. I had to learn from someone. Um, it, I didn't just learn or just wake up one day and know how to do real estate transactions, I had to learn. I had to do the work. Same same with radio and everything, especially when you're pivoting. When you're pivoting, you have to rebrand yourself because your same circle, and I remember this too, when I went from radio to real estate, no one that was in my circle would buy from me. No one. Why? Because they believed me as a as a radio personality, not as a real estate professional. Right. So when you're rebranding yourself and repositioning, going where God is taking you, stepping up into the moment, often it will feel very lonely and you're going to have to do the work and plant the seeds and often go outside of your sphere to build your new brand before you'll start to see the support inside. But, um, you know, I had to do exactly that, Kiana. Step back, be a sponge, and learn. Humble myself. I had to get coffee. Listen, I was a top radio personality, but over here in real estate, I was getting coffee. <laughs> because I wanted to learn at that point. I mean, that was 20 years ago, but but it is. We are now, and we all have to be willing to take a step back and learn. And, I, and, and like you said, when you're branding for where you want to go and that positioning and that yeah. pivoting, you know, I, and I was laughing about this the other day on my um, training platform, but I said, raise your hand if all you wanted to be was a lifestyle agent. And everybody raised their hand. I said, and raise your hand if you see that business slow down. Mm -hmm. A lot of people kept their hands up. You know yeah. why? Because we it was it was so easy to sell when the market was hot. The market is cooling off. So that lifestyle agent, I'm always on the beach. I'm always drinking. I'm always at parties. Mm -hmm. I'm never working. I'm never giving any real estate advice. I'm never showing you that real estate value. And that's from the social media marketing standpoint. And you wonder why. You can't you you lost your market share. And my my warning to a lot of you guys is don't lose your market share doing what you think other people, what you see other people right. are doing. Because like Egypt, her name is in the room. She could never post a house, but she walks in, that's Egypt, and she yes. sells houses. I remember when I met her, I was buying a dress. And I was You're like, I didn't even remember. She walks up to me and I'm like, and I'm new in real estate. So I'm like, it's like, that's Egypt. You know, and then she like, I'm really like getting started. I'm getting popping. This was literally like 2016. And um, we were talking and she was like, oh, wow, you look really nice in that dress. Oh, you're a model. I'm like, girl, no, I sell real estate. And then I'm like, what's your name? And she gave me her number and all that stuff. And you gave me the best piece of advice. And I'll never forget it. And you was on property versions and you said, I do the reality TV, but I am a broker and I get paid on those closings. I will never forget that you told me that. And I will never forget that you was like, I'm about my business. I'll, mm -hmm. Like I'm not on TV just to be on TV. Mm -hmm. I am actually closing deals. Yeah. And that is what was so exciting for me to like hear that because I think we get caught up in the spotlight of it all, not recognizing that one, you are still closing deals. L listen, number one, thank you for telling that story. I remember you told me that, um, you know, at the Earn Your Leisure conference. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I knew you looked familiar, but I couldn't place where I, where I had met you before. And, of course, you always think it's social media. And, by the way, broker or not, you could still be a model. She's gorgeous. Isn't she? She's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Matt, Matt, you can model, too. 
Thank you. Look, look, you know, I got a haircut today just for you, Egypt. You know what I mean? I had to come and go get a million dollar haircut just so I could be on this stage. And I don't, I know I got two beautiful women on here. I said, I can't be looking crazy. Oh, yeah. You can't, you came with the fresh cut today. We see you. I try. I try. I try. But, you know, I wanted to say something. You was talking about the mentorship. And I think it's very important. One thing we need to add to that is that folks got to stop thinking they're going to make money right away just because you get a mentor. Right. You have to learn, soak up all that information and you have to be passionate about whether it's real estate, business, entrepreneurship, whatever it is. If you're going to be with a mentor, you need to first make sure that you're passionate, because if you especially if you're paying for a mentor, you're going to waste your money if you're not passionate about what you're doing. And I think a lot of people forget that. They just see folks like us. We do well. We're successful. We're doing all these great things. And they say, oh, can you mentor me? They pay the price. They meant you mentor them but you're not doing the work. You're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. So I need all of you guys to really understand you got to put in that work. You, you can't think about making money. You can't get discouraged if you're not making money. If you're truly passionate about this business, especially real estate, because of the ebbs and flows that Egypt was talking about earlier, you're going to go through some shit. You're going to have months that you ain't going to make no money. You may have a whole year where you be a dud and then the next year you a stud. Right. But you got to be willing to go through that pain because you're passionate about helping people achieve their real estate goals. That has to be your first and foremost thing in this business, because if not, you're not going to make no money. So if you think you're going to come in this business and you're going to be making seven figures off the bat. Congratulations. You played yourself. There's, there's two things I'd like to add to this. Number one, markets like these really separate the real from the fake. Facts. And when I say that is, you know, we've got so many um, shows right now showcasing real estate, which is fantastic. I remember when I first came in, it was like nobody, you know, showcasing real estate. It was like an old ladies game. But uh, but now this is fantastic. It's sexy. It's hot. It's hip. People are watching on social media, people really branding their businesses and growing in real estate and mortgages and all these different fields. And so you you see those online who are specifically on TikTok, right? Who are, I'm a real, look, boobies out, I'm a real estate agent. And, and you're like, okay, well, you know, come on, I'm telling the truth. This is Rants and Gems, can I just- Oh, we can, oh, we can have Go ahead, go, go ahead, queen. And you know, or they're, they're chewing gum or they're in the bedroom, TikTok dancing on one post and giving the twerking. And then the next one, they want to give you some, some, some sincere real estate advice and all that. And, and what I'm saying folks is, okay, this social media tool is powerful and it's great, but there's a lot of fake on here. What this market is going to do is separate you from the real, okay? Because for those who last, those are the ones who paid their dues, who did the real work, who perfected their craft. What you have an opportunity to do if you built a huge brand on social media is now you built this brand, but you haven't done the work. Go back now and do the work then, right? Mm -hmm. Substantiate that brand. Go back and do the work. You still have the opportunity to rectify it and grow. <laughs> Go on and laugh because you know I'm telling well, the you truth. Know I'm laughing because I know it's true. Like yeah. I know it's true. And I've, I have, I've, I've recently was having this conversation with my group and I said a lot of people just got caught up in the, and I, and I got to say this, and I, this is Rants and Gems. And I was just at um, Inman Connect, right? And so mm -hmm. shout out to Aaron Kerman, you know, the guy that sold the hundred million dollar house. We interviewed yeah. him. So he yeah. comes running up to me. Um, mm -hmm. Frederick, he's like, oh, my, like, I think I'm like the minority, one of the minority black real estate people in real estate that people kind of know because of my market share on social media. So all these people, like they can do what they want. They can post their dogs all day. They're not really <laughs> getting really substantial real estate advice, but they're listing and selling 20, 20 million dollar houses and yeah. hundred million dollar houses. And I think as minorities, we got to think that most of our buyers and sellers will be minorities. And because we are already so far behind um, when it comes to home ownership, we have a certain way that we think it's supposed to look. So we have a certain amount. We, we're going to need our people to give us more real estate information. We're going to need our people to operate with a certain level of professionalism. professionalism. And, 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 I'm, and I say that and I mean that. I've, I literally have, have gotten to the point, I used to love to share everything. I will go to whole events and I share nothing. Some things I want to keep to myself because my page is to educate 
I will entertain you on Rants and Gems. I love, like, I come on here and say whatever I want to say. That's your entertainment for the week. I'm going I'm, to I'm keep it 100% real, percent real. I might post my dog and my husband because that's my husband. I, won't, I, I, need, I need friendly reminders going out. The DMs are in shambles sometimes. <laughs> I need those friendly reminders. But then that's it. I want you to know that I'm here to help service you when it comes to oh, these are the right. businesses I run. That's so right. I do agree when it comes to mo like social media, we have to 100% be cognizant of what we're putting out there because it's really hard to watch a twerk video on Monday and then Tuesday you put your glasses on, put your glasses on for me and say, hey, but, but, but look, I, this is why I also say to people, you can have multiple accounts. So you can have an account that's about your, your business and then you have, this is my social account with my friends and all of that but but also recognize that's out there as well once you put it out into the social media sphere i just made that word up once you put it out into the social media sphere it's all there for consumption and so you want your brand to to have a level of consistency but if you want to really resonate over here then you can create that account that's specifically for your business and over here so i'm a little different because what what happened with me is I, I am a real estate broker and I started in a time where we didn't have social media. Absolutely. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram. There was no Twitter. You know, everything. I, I literally started in real estate where y'all gonna laugh at this. When we show houses, we had to drive to the other agent's office to pick up the key and then go drive and open the door. And when we were done, go drive the key back. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, good old, the good old days. Right. It was a long time ago. But, but so what's different is so I, I was in this space and I built my business, but then my pers persona as a media personality in the on TV, people wanted to see more. So then I have to give that balance. So I started my business account well after the Egypt Sherrod account, which people knew as a media personality. But again, guys, free tools we can use. You know, I, I spoke at a Century 21 conference in Chicago this week, and it was more than 300 agents there. I asked them, I said, guys, who's, who's on social media right now? And it was quiet. And I said, I'm on the wrong stage. And I said, yeah. okay, who's on TikTok and Instagram right now? Maybe only one third of the audience raised their hand. And I think they just raised it not to be on the spot. And I said, who's on Facebook right now? Maybe another one third raised their hand. And I said, so you're paying for all this marketing for your brand and for your business, but you're not using the most powerful free tools that this generation has for branding. Are you kidding me? Come on. We got to get on it. We got to change yeah. our mind. Those change folks like this, they're still like, old school. They want to use mailers and, and go no, knock, knock doors. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. why would you want to do that when you could just pick up your phone and speak to thousands of people in two seconds? Like, it doesn't make any yeah, sense to me. They got to see the value of it first. And I remember I said this, and I always tell people that, like, what do you do for lead generation? I invest, I invest in photo and video marketing. I invest in media. Me investing in the media is what got me here. I don't pay for leads. And I'm able to consistently close a su substantial amount of real estate based on social media presence and i know people nice. that are paying 30 like I, i'm a broker i see what we're paying these companies for these referral fees and they're not cheap 35 percent, 40 percent and then you got to pay your broker split on top of that and i have never paid for leads i have never paid ever for a lead i've yeah. always I, I give grace to god because I, it's not because of me it's truly because of grace that I feel that my business has been successful and that I have uh, the ability to forecast and think forward in my career as well. Um, you guys clearly have that ability and that grace over your life as well. But, but what I'm saying, folks, is when you're doing a great job of branding yourself and becoming an expert in whatever your space is, right, you've done that great job, you are the brand. You are the brand. So people will come into your DMs. They will email you. They will chase you to give you their business. You won't have to lead generate. So it's worth the investment in yourself to take that time, be consistent, post every day, post on brand, make sure you're peeling back those layers and brand forward. I love brand it. Forward. So look, I know we're running on time, Egypt, but first mm -hmm. of all, I want to thank you. You are an absolute icon. Um, yes. Like I, t I, I told, and I'll tell everybody, Egypt is an icon. If you don't know who Egypt is, you're playing yourself. You need to go to Google and do your research because 
she is an absolute icon, not just in the real estate, but in the entertainment world. So we definitely appreciate your time tonight. But we need you to leave us with one more rant and one more gem because you <laughs> you got you got the gems and we got to make the best of this situation. You know what I mean? Close mouth don't get fed. So we need one more rant, one more gem, Egypt. I don't know if you're going to like this one, but I'm going to go ahead and go. So we know the terms blockbusting redlining, steering, and we, most of us understand that that means, you know, racial bias, discrimination within the real estate field. But the new terms are incentivize and affordability solutions. Mm. Okay. I'm not saying any names, but y'all know what I'm talking about. There are programs out there right now that we think are for our betterment, but really what they are is the new age way to discriminate and to steer our community into communities that they think they're incentivizing to purchase property only in areas that they want black people to live in. Mm. That's a problem for me. So if you really want to help the black community and you want to incentivize us and you want to empower us and give us affordability solutions, then you're going to make sure that we are approved for these loans. You're going to make sure that there are funds and programs there for us to buy in any community that we want to buy in. And I'm going to leave it there. I like it. I, I love it. I, I love it. <laughs> I heard you. And we heard you. <laughs> drop some gems for Egypt. Drop, drop some gems for Egypt. Thank you so much. Um, we, Tell me how to find you, you, Egypt. I number one, I adore you. You guys are doing a phenomenal job. Keep going. We need you. We need you. I live in a world of abundance, and I believe in a God of abundance, which means that there's always more than enough for everybody. And so, I don't care if it's two million agents. I don't care if it's two million, you know, uh, mortgage brokers as well. There's always enough for us when you're doing the work and you're branding yourself properly. And so folks, you can find me <laughs> on Instagram. It's my name, Egypt Sherrod. And if you can't spell Egypt right, then we got a whole nother problem. Uh, <laughs> so you can find me across the board at Egypt Sherrod. Egypt, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Um, we love you. We're proud thank of you. you. Um, shout out Very to- Real you. Estate season two coming. <laughs> oh yeah. When, when is it coming? Uh, January 12th, I believe is our, is our season premiere date for season two. 15.1 million viewers on our first season, which was, we, we want to outpace that as well. We appreciate all the support, guys. Thank Incredible. You. And what station is going to be on? HGTV. And Make by sure. the way, Lil, Lil John's on HGTV now, too. It is not your mama's HGTV. Oh, oh look. They need to get, they need to get Rance and Gems over at HGTV, too. I, you know what? Maybe we need to come film with y'all or something. We need to do oh, something. We're ready. Hello, Egypt. We are ready. Let's go. We, we, me and Kiana are made for TV. Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> Executive oh, producer. Oh, Let's go. One more time. That was funny. Hold the books up one more time. We, and we did it at the same time. <laughs> Brand forward, Egypt. Brand forward. Brand forward. I love it. I love it. Congrats, guys, truly. And thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you, Egypt, so for much. your time today. All right. Shout out to Egypt, man. Egypt that was amazing. Amazing. If you guys enjoyed this episode, drop some gems in the chat. Drop some gems in the chat. Um, she just, like I told you, she's always just straightforward. And, you know, she's about the business. And she's not afraid to say what's going on. So I hope you guys took those notes. Brand Ford is the best advice I feel like she's given. Um, she gave so many gems, but Brand Ford, I feel like that was like the theme of her message. And you guys need to take that into consideration as you go about your careers. Oh, that's going to be a clip. Well, if you're watching this, <laughs> that's the first clip of the morning, please, mm -hmm. because that was a major gem. It was incredible. Um, this was a great show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Share this with a hundred thousand people. <laughs> Go to Apple, Spotify, wherever you're watching podcasts, download it, leave a review. You know, let's make Rants and Gems the number one on the charts in the real estate space. And um, make sure you go pick up Clear the Clothes uh, from Kiana Watson and make sure you pick up House Hackonomics from Matthew Garland. Both links will be in the description. And once again, shout out to our sponsor. For today's episode, Zillow. Zillow, we appreciate the data. We appreciate everything. And if you guys are looking to buy a home, make sure you guys go to Zillow.com. They have all the tools and everything that you guys need to be successful in real estate. So make sure you guys tap in with Zillow. 
go to Zillow.com. And in the description of this video, we're going to have some good links, some good resources provided by Zillow. So that way you guys can have, you know, resources, the calculators, first time home buyer kits, the whole nine yards. So again, Zillow, we appreciate the love and thank you for your sponsorship. Um, everybody type type Zillow in the comments real quick. Yeah, give Zillow some love. Give Zillow. give Zillow some love, man. Give Zillow some love. Yes. All right. So any parting words, Kiana? My parting words are, you know, brand forward. Keep in mind that where you start is, is not where you start is where you finish. So for those that are real estate professionals, y'all got to get ready to weather the storm. And that's in real estate. That's in mortgages. You got to get ready to weather this storm. And you need to prepare yourself to be of service. Um, as me and one of my agents were talking about, we said that the, the future of the real estate industry will be in service and education. So prepare yourself to be of service and educate your clients. And yeah, Clear to Close, the book is out, Brokering My Blueprint for Success. It is a business memoir. Thank you guys for supporting the book. I appreciate you all. Um, share it with a friend, buy it, get it for yourselves. Uh, we've sent out over 200 copies so far from the pre-sale. So we are pushing the orders out. You guys should be receiving your books this week from people that we sent out last week. When you Love get it. your book, tag us. And um, thank you for tapping into Rants and Gems. We've been switching things up around here. And I think that y'all are liking the new format. Um, me and Matt go back and forth about it so much because you guys <laughs> know we started off really big in the studio. And now we're just giving you guys straight data and information. So if you love this, drop some gems in the chat. Yeah, I think it's, I, I love this. And that's why I love the partnership with Zillow, because we're going to have access to, you know, so much more data that we're going to be able to share with our audience. I'm um, not just here on Wednesdays, but, you know, like I said, audio, we're going to start dropping things on audio and a lot of data as we get it from Zillow. I'm, I'm going to make a lot of reels on the Rants and Gems Instagram and TikTok pages also. So make sure you're tapped in with that as well. Um, and, you know, I think this format going virtual, that way we can just be top of mind, top of, top of the um, market. And be able to deliver you guys that information. And maybe we'll start having, you know, this new run of show. I like we do the market update. We bring on the guests. So maybe we'll start getting back to having more guests on the show um, because Egypt was just so dynamic. It just it made me miss having people on. Yeah. That are in the space. Like you know what I mean? People that are, you know, are in real estate. And I think she comes from such a real realistic perspective. So let's look for more people that we know are in the field and actively moving and shaking. Um, cause I think that we, it's okay to be inspired by billionaires and all that. Cause we got some of those episodes coming up too. Oh, we damn sure do. Yeah, we definitely do. But I do feel like people that are tangible and really in the field and moving and shaking every day is more relatable and it helps our audience to diversify. No, that's a fact. So we got some great episodes coming, but we definitely going to keep this format going. But again, audio is very important. Ladies and gentlemen, go to audio, download the pod, leave a review, um, rate it five stars, share it with people. If you watch it here, listen to it at the same time, listen to it while you're in the gym, on your way to work, or whatever you do. Um, but we definitely appreciate all the support. And um, again, all, every, all the links, Egypt's information, everything will be in the description of this video. And again, thank you to Zillow for the partnership. We appreciate you guys. And um, yeah, I think that's it. That's where we go. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be in Miami on friday so i'm gonna be at the path to prosperity conference so if you're going to be there um shout out to ash cash who was also also on eyl network so yeah. shout out to ash i'm super proud of um, him storm and marvin mitchell they put together a mega conference so i'm gonna be speaking at that this weekend in miami and then invest fest london guys invest fest euro in london halloween next week the end of the month get your tickets it's almost sold out. Come across the pond. No perfect time to go to London if you've never been to London before is when EYL will be in the building because everything we do is a movie. I guarantee you when you see the videos and the pictures from London, you're going to be like, damn, these dudes were the American royals in London. I'm trying to tell you this. Your boy MG going to be looking like James Bond in London. M, M, and what is it, MI6? I'm all of that in London. So you better you better pull up to London. Shout out to Terrence J. We're going to have the illest, dopest Halloween party in London history. You better come to Invest Fest 
in London. Go to investfest.com to get your tickets. That's all I got for y'all. My name is Matt Garland, NMLS number 58700, better known as the House Hackonomics King, a.k.a. MG, the mortgage guy. <laughs> And my name is Kiana Watson, license number E17576, broker extraordinaire. And I just dropped a book, Clear to Close, Brokering My Blueprint for Success. You can get it on, on Amazon and on Barnes and Nobles. I appreciate you guys tuning in to another incredible episode of the Rants and Gems Show. The business memoir. <laughs> it's a business memoir. <laughs> Please. <laughs>